Welcome everybody to today's webinar from DAT Freight and Analytics. Today we're going to be talking to you live uh, on YouTube about mastering your margins. And we really want to talk a lot about key tips we have for owner operators to really understand their operating costs and how you can continue to improve your business. Um, my name is Robert Rouse. I'm going to be the host for today. I've been a product manager at DAT for a number of years now, been in the industry for over 10. Um, so really excited to bring this awesome content to you today. Um, I'm really excited about the guests that we're bringing on. They have so much knowledge in this specific area. I'd like to introduce both Kenny and Elizabeth Long from Patriot Star. Welcome, Kenny and Elizabeth. Appreciate you guys being here. Thank you. We're happy Thank to you. be here. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and, and, and kind of get started with a little bit of an introduction. We really want everybody to understand if you haven't met Kenny and Elizabeth, uh, I I'll guarantee a lot of people have out there. I want to want to go ahead and give them an opportunity to kind of give a little bit of a background about how you guys got started in the business um, and how you guys have gone through your your journey of your business as well, kind of growing uh, that that business. So could you kind of give us some background on that? Sure. Um, I've been in trucking really my whole life since I was a little kid, uh, kind of changed a few industries from the construction side to the over the road side. And I was leased to a few carriers prior to starting our own authority. And we started Patriot Star in 2012. So we've been at this with Patriot Star uh, running a fleet for 12 years now, and it's been going great. And, uh, you know, we've been working on the over the road market, working a lot with DAT, you know, spot market freight. Uh, we run owner operators. Yeah, I still drive myself. Elizabeth also is a driver. And we've been running the company together. And then we uh, actually started a brokerage to help handle some of our customers' needs as well. So now we know both sides of the negotiation table, what the brokers are seeing, what the carriers see. Uh, and so, you know, that's where we're at. And, you know, we, we love the industry. It's done a lot for us. Uh, but we know the ups and downs. We've been in it through several market swings. We know, you know, where, what you really need to focus on and pay attention to, which is kind of what brings us here today, talking about numbers and knowing, you know, how to dispatch and, and profit as much as possible from every load and uh, see the bigger picture. Awesome. And, and Elizabeth, how did you get started in, in the trucking? So so as Ken said, you're a driver as well. How did yeah. you get into this? Great question. Um, so I met Kenny, we got married and uh, decided that I didn't want to be separated from him while he was over the road by himself. So I decided to get my CDL and Kenny actually trained me and um, we've been driving together since 2012. And we teamed for many years. And as our business grew, I started, we both started to stay in the office more and be on the road a little bit less. And uh, now I primarily focus on our freight brokerage and Kenny works mainly with our carrier side. So um, it's been pretty amazing. And, and we really started the brokerage organically with we had some customers on our carrier side that we just couldn't service uh, fully with the trucks that we had. So we started the brokerage to help continue servicing them. Well, one last question and we'll, we'll move on to the actual nitty gritty of what we're here to talk about today. So, so Kenny, you started out with one truck, right? And, and how many, how big are you guys now um, in just, you know, a couple of years? Well, we have been, you know, up and down in fleet size. We primarily run owner operators. Um, we assist in coaching owner operators to move on to get their own authority one day. So that's how our whole program works. We give them all the tools to do that, including a seat at DAT uh, to show them all the analytics, the information. Um, and we give them all the tools to go on their own. So we've been as high as 25 trucks, uh, you know, due to market conditions, we're running nine trucks currently um, and up and down. And then as our trucks go one way, our brokerage goes another way. And it's kind of ebbs and flows on both sides of the, the market. Uh, but we've always kind of made it a core focus to help owner operators to grow and expand their own business. So if they come to us, I tell them when they come in, if they want to get their own authority one day, I will help them sign the paperwork and get it done, get it all set up for them. So we have several owner operators. I know several are watching this now that have been leased to us in the past and have gone on to get their own authority um, and have, have grown that way. And we started our Facebook group also back in 2014 to help assist with that. That's uh, the uh, Rates and Lanes Facebook group. And that's kind of how you guys found us is to we're always coaching 
and helping other owner operators and drivers and carriers to grow their business as well. That's fantastic. All right, let's move move on and get, start getting into the actual details of this awesome presentation today. The first thing that we wanted to start out with is really just starting out talking about the operational costs um, that a carrier can have. Um, one of the things that we saw over the pandemic is we saw lots and lots of people find the trucking industry and find a new way to make lots of really good money. Mm -hmm. um, during the pandemic, there was so many loads out there um, and everything was moving at really high rates. And so everybody that came and joined into the, the market at that time was making really good money. And what we've seen is that's an ab pretty abnormal place for the market to be um, that consistently high. And one of the things that in from my experience in talking with some of those drivers that entered the market during that period of time was that they didn't understand their operating cost. One of the first things that I always do when talking with a driver it might seem a little weird, but I will ask them, hey, do you know what your operating cost per mile is? It's something that, you know, most carriers, I would hope, would know right off the bat, because that tells me if they know that operating cost, that means that they're looking at every little piece of the business and really trying to understand how to China change all those different things. And what I found was a lot of those those carriers didn't know that they had a number, uh, you know, maybe ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars that they wanted to make per month. But that really didn't help them understand was even if they make fifteen thousand, were they actually being profitable? And that's really what we wanted to get into today. Um, and really start to, to, to kind of round out that information. So we're going to go with, with a couple different tips that we have for you to, today, and we're going to move on to the, the first tip. And the first tip is really going to be to know your actual numbers. Mm -hmm. um, this is pretty crucial. Um, and so one of the things in really quick, we're, we'll switch over to something that we built in, in the DAT application. One second, and then we'll we'll jump over to Kenny to talk a little bit more about this because I know he has a lot of information. Is when you start out, the 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 very first thing that any carrier should do is sit down and go through all of their numbers, right? DAT has made it somewhat easier for your, for every carrier to do that. Um, we've we've kind of built that into the the load searching experience. So that way a carrier can sit down, go through all of their different costs that they may have. So Kenny, when you were first coaching a carrier, kind of talk me through how you might tell, talk to a carrier about that initial experience. You hit on every major point. I mean, the market is gonna have the ups and downs. In, you know, right after the pandemic, we had extreme highs and a lot of people got used to that, thought that was a new normal. And I was warning everyone, don't go out and buy a new boat and a new Harley and everything because it's going to turn. A lot of people just gave me a lot of kickback from that. When I bring in a new driver as an owner operator uh, for an orientation that's going to lease to me, I sit him down. The very first thing I go through is knowing your numbers. And I always ask, you know, what do you need? That's just a blanket question. What do you need? What is your and need, not what you want, right? Because there's two big differences there. What do you need and what do you want? And I ask them what they need and I'll have some, one driver will say, I can do this for 75 cents a mile. And I have another driver say, I can do this for, I need, don't turn the key for less than $5 a mile. And I have everything in between. And it all comes down to, they don't know what their numbers are. So the 75 cents a mile driver, I say, well, who's driving the truck? How much you pay the driver? Well, I'm an owner operator, I drive it myself. So what you're saying is, and you're willing to drive it for free, you're willing to do this, you know, just at, at your fuel cost, right? Or you have the other extreme of, I won't do it for less than $5 a mile or whatever that big number is. And where do they get that number? Well, I saw that was an average I saw somewhere posted on some, you know, Facebook group, or I heard it on the lunch counter, right? And, but neither of those are really what you need. You actually need to know what your actual cost is. And it should be to the penny or even fraction of a penny if you're really meticulous about it. Um, so knowing your costs and if the a big part of the problem is new drivers don't always have those numbers so you do have to kind of pull some uh you know do some research and pull some numbers together as averages uh, and i help drivers do that but knowing your actual costs uh to 
pay for the fuel, the truck payment, the maintenance. Uh, whether you have a new truck or an old truck, there will be money that you have to put into it. Uh, you have to factor in driver pay, even if you're driving it for yourself. How much do you want to take home at the end of the week? Uh, and all of the you know other factors that go into running a trucking company. You, if you break that all down, you have a actual cost per mile. You have you know, a daily cost because we know if you buy a truck and you park it in your, in your driveway and let it sit for a month, at the end of the month, you still have bills to pay for that truck, right? So there's a there's a cost to just owning the truck, just sitting there, a fixed expense and the variable expense of driving it. And you need to know what those are. So, you know, your daily expenses, your per mile expenses, and a combination of all of that. So the tools that DAT has built in has really helped a lot, but at the same time can be very dangerous. And I think that's why we wanted to have this webinar, because you have to understand, you know, if, if I was to hand you a hammer, it, you couldn't necessarily go out and build a house. You need more than just a hammer. You're going to need the saw. You're going to need the lumber. You, you know what I mean? There are there are more things that go into building a house than just a hammer. So the, the tools that DAT has, you know, you got to look at it as just one of many tools that are in your toolbox. And how can you use them all together to build that house to actually get to the end goal of being successful and what do you need? Um, so yeah. having a profit and loss sheet and having your actual costs put into something like the profit estimator with the, you know, the new DAT1 app is super helpful when you're looking at a per load basis. But you also have to look at the bigger picture of the market, uh, you know, in the DAT market index indicators, uh, market condition indicators rather, uh, and just the, the overall 30,000 foot view, one of the first things I do every day before I go to dispatch a truck is I pull up DAT trend lines, which is free to everybody, even if you're not a DAT subscriber, right? So you look at that and it gives you an average national rate, very broad, doesn't break it down into markets, but you can really kind of pinpoint like this is the, the target of where I need to be overall. And this is what the market will bear. And so to start with that view, to know where you can be, and then try to get your costs under control so you can make sure you're profitable at that number. Because if you live in the Biltmore, right, and you have millions of dollars of expenses, you may not be able to be profitable with the rates that are out there. You need to figure out how to cut those expenses. So tracking your, your costs to know where your improvements can be made. If you're driving a truck that's getting four miles to the gallon, what can you do in, to improve that? Or if your maintenance costs are too high, what can you do to improve that? And you need to know where all your costs are going, where your money is going out, where the holes are in your bucket to plug those holes and work on the, the revenue from both sides. And yep. with the market, the way it was in, you know, post pandemic, people didn't care how many holes were in their bucket because they were dumping money in so fast. You could drive anywhere in the country, fall out of the truck into a pile of money and that dried up. And now we really have to focus on the individual markets, focus on controlling the expenses and keeping those costs under control and knowing what is a good load and a bad load to take based on the load, individual loads, as well as the bigger picture of the average between multiple loads coming in and out of certain markets. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about those holes that might be in your bucket. And so let's start. So one of the things uh, we're, we're up showing the DAT1 mobile app, and I want to go through some of the things that Kenny just hit on. He, he hit on a, a, a variety of things that, you know, we help you understand a little bit more in, in the, the DAT app. Now, understand, as Kenny said, don't take this as gospel. Right. This is one tool in the toolbox. And we're going to show you a little bit about a little bit later about how you can use that to your advantage. Right. And, and exactly how to at, use that tool like a hammer to actually hit that nail. So to start off, um, one of the things we start off with is how much you want to make. And again, this isn't a perfect example. Right. As Kenny said, sometimes you can get really detailed if you write all this stuff down on on a on a sheet of paper um, and, and really start just doing the math. But in, in the DAT1 app, we gave you a, an easy tool to put in an approximate amount of miles per week that you want to drive, right? And again, if you drive less or drive more, that will change your operating cost a little bit. But you kind of, most drivers will get, I think I can get around this many miles per, per, per week. 
And, and ultimately that's going to help set, set you up and understand how do you, how can we start calculating that cost for you? The other thing that you want to understand, as Kenny said, is if, even if you're an owner operator, you don't want to just be driving for free. That's never what yeah. you want to do. Um, you want to make sure that, that you're taking home and taking care of your families. And so we have that there so that way you can put in how much per week that you actually want to make. So if, if you have a monthly number that you have today, maybe it's five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000, whatever you think you need to help support your family, you put that in and divide it by four, and that's going to give you your monthly cost. Um, then we get down into the fixed cost. Now, this is the things that Kenny said, even if you park your truck for an entire month, all of these bills are going to come due. Right. And so that's why we put them here in a fixed cost. Um, and then we'll show you a little bit more about the variable cost here in a little bit when we start showing you how to use the profit estimator. So some of these things um, should sound very, very familiar for you. Truck payments, trailer payments, auto insurance, cargo insurance, all that kind of stuff. The one that I really wanted to touch on because I think it's super important is having an emergency equipment fund. Make sure you're setting aside that money every single load or every single uh, week or month, but setting aside that money for when something happens. Um, Kenny and I were talking before, one of the things that I've seen uh, put a bunch of drivers out of business over the last year or so that started in the pandemic, bought a used truck, and maybe didn't know some of the ins and outs of the maintenance that might have to happen, things like an engine rebuild that comes up that that's a huge $20, $20,000 bill or up to $40,000 bill that comes due right away. And if you aren't prepared for it, that's really going to help take you out. That's going to take you out of business potentially. So Kenny, is there any areas in these fixed costs that you provide a little more guidance on? Yeah. One of the big factors is a truck payment. So a lot of drivers right now are really trying to skimp on everything they can. And so I've seen drivers that have a, a truck that they bought during the peak when truck prices were inflated and their truck payment is way, way higher than it should be. Right. And we're talking thousands of dollars a week for a truck that if you bought now might be a, you know, 25% of that. And they're trying to survive at current rates and it's very, very difficult. Um, the other side of that is you'll have a driver that buys the old used truck and is trying to get by and not putting the money aside or that driver that has that, you know, $1,000 or $2,000 a week truck payment or, you know, multiple, you know, four or $5,000 a month truck payment, they pay the truck off and all of a sudden they think they can run for pennies on the dollar because now they don't have a truck payment. And like you said, it doesn't matter if the truck is brand new right off the showroom floor or it's got a million miles on it, it will need maintenance repairs. There will be money you have to put into it. Your truck payment is going to be high on a new truck, but your maintenance costs may be lower. An older truck, maintenance cost is usually gonna make up for the truck payment, and that really never changes. So you really have to be careful, make sure that if there's anything you can do right now for any driver that's got a truck that they bought in the past couple of years, get it paid off as soon as possible, Try to get out from under this overinflated truck payment, refinance it if you can, whatever you can. I know that is a real big pain point for a lot of drivers. That's an expense that's very difficult to do anything about. Um, but that's one thing if you can try to control that expense. But once you do get that under control, remember, you still have to put that extra money into a maintenance fund, a reserve account of some sort for that emergency that will happen. It's not a, it's not an if, it's a when, it's going to happen. There will be tires, there will be engines, transmissions, clutches, whatever it is, there's going to be major repairs out there that you need to have that money set aside. Absolutely. One of the other pro tips that I think is really, really important is like, as Kenny said, put that money aside. The one thing you want to do is put it into a different account, yeah. right? Put it into a savings account, put it into to something else that's different from your main account that you're that you're really doing most of your 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 business from the reason why i say that is because what a lot of people will have happen is they'll see us at the number for that their their main account and not realize in the back of their head when they're looking at it go oh yeah i got need to remember that a certain number of that amount 
is actually for my equipment maintenance fund, right? And so what will happen is they'll get this false sense of security that they have more than they really do because they, they there's going to be expenditures coming up. And so by taking that money, putting it into a savings account, and again, if you don't use it for a couple of years until you actually have a big expense, right? Um, that's fine. But then if you're putting it in a savings account, you are actually accruing a little bit of money on that as well. Like most savings accounts do have certain things where it can make a little bit of pennies on the, on the dollar every month, um, which is just, it may not add up to a ton, but every penny counts in this, in this business. And so just another tip. So that way you don't get a false sense of where your business is actually at. Um, one last thing, Kenny, you talked about the profit, profit and loss sheet earlier on. Just want to touch on that for a second. So so where I, I think you have a really cool template that carriers can use. Where can they find that? How can they get to that? So I, before we did the webinar, I threw together a quick Excel spreadsheet. I po posted it in the Rates and Lanes Facebook group. It's a file. Anybody can get to it. Um, and it's just a daily profit estimator to show your deadhead, your deadhead percentage, uh, and I'm gonna give some credit to another one that joins us on these a lot. Dave Caf Casanova kind of gave me a, an outline to follow with that, but, um, and it, it'll help you to narrow down your running totals. Uh, because if you look at your profit estimator on the app on a per load basis, it might show that that load is profitable, but you also has to have to look at, you know, the, the running total of the average. And you know, I always use Florida as an example. Um, going into florida let's say just to use round numbers you know the meaningless round numbers it, you need two dollars a mile and if you're sitting in atlanta georgia and you see a load going to miami nine months out of the year we all know florida is a really bad market coming out you don't need any tools to know that right <laughs> so uh if you go into miami and your profit estimator says two dollars a mile and that's going to be a profitable load for you and you do that and you get down to Miami and realize you're going to have to deadhead all the way back to Atlanta to get your next load or take something that's way, way below what you need. The average of those two loads may not balance out. So I created this little daily profit estimator to have a running total of both the load you're on as well as the previous load and then look at what you might need for the next load. That'll help you determine that. Plus, in this market, there's only so much you can do with revenue. There's only so much you can do with costs. If you have trimmed down all your costs as much as possible and you have increased your revenue and done everything you can to negotiate and know the markets and you've done all of that, the next thing you need to look at is your deadhead. So if you have maximized your revenue, can you reduce your deadhead? So if your deadhead percentage is 10 or 20 or 30 percent, you know, deadheading 50 percent all the way out of Florida back to where you started from, what could you do to reduce that that might also put money on the bottom line? Because your profit estimator might show a load from Miami to Atlanta that is a losing load, right? You're losing money on that. It still might make more sense to take a load that just covers fuel or your daily expense because Miami to Atlanta is close to 700 miles. So you know, you've got a full day and a half of driving time invested in that. What can you do to cut that deadhead down and help put money on the bottom line? And looking at all the loads totaled, from the beginning of the year until now or beginning of this week until now you need to look at the average overall the bigger picture yeah absolutely all right moving on to the next tip um want to really start to one of the things kenny touched on earlier as well is understanding the different tools that you can use to understand the actual market dynamics um one of the tools that kenny mentioned was the dat trend lines this is a very easy to use tool. Um, it's right on DAT.com. You can go there. Um, it's updated once a week and it provides you uh, a really good high level 10,000 foot view of how the market is performing. So it will tell you our load volumes up our load volumes down. Uh, what impact do we see on rates at a national level? And again, don't use that as your single factor analysis. Don't use just that as like, oh, that's perfect. I If it says $2.50 a mile uh, for the national rate, that doesn't mean every lane in the country is going to be $2.50 a mile. That just means in totality, when you look across everything, that's what the entire average is. And so what it's really trying to do is just give you a, a gut of is the market moving up? Is the market moving down? 
where are those market cycles doing? So for example, if the market's moving up, you may see rates start to increase for a lane that you ran two or three weeks ago. You might go back and see, hey, I could actually might maybe get a little more on that specific lane, but it just helps you get that higher level. Um, now, I know the other tools are that we wanted to talk about are, are really interesting as well, which is the national load count and market conditions. These two tools are both used on our web platforms. Um, the national load count, what it does is it shows you inbound and outbound load volumes for every single state. Um, and really what you're looking for there is very simple, is are there more outgoing loads than incoming? Because if there's more outgoing loads than incoming, that means there's not enough trucks coming in to take care of all the outgoing loads. So that usually is going to be a good sign for rates versus if you're going in, if you're looking at a state and there's thousands of trucks going out and only hundred loads going or hundred thousand loads coming in and only a hundred loads going out, it's probably not going to be a great thing for rates because there's going to be a lot of trucks trying to find a way out of that specific market. So understanding that will be huge. So Elizabeth, I, I know, you, you know, you're working in, in a variety of areas, but how do you use those tools to, to kind of understand where the market is? Sure. I, um, I found that they're really useful for me to be able to see what's happening in different parts of the country at different times of year and to be able to uh, deliver accurate quotes to my customers um, on the brokerage side and then also figure out when I'm helping Kenny dispatch our own trucks or find loads for any of our drivers to help them out, you know, to be able to see where we want to send them, what markets we want to focus on um, running our trucks in. So, so you definitely use it for repositioning your trucks to see like, hey, maybe I'll take a load up to maybe Oregon, for example, in late fall. To, right. You know, sure. Do you look at those types of opportunities? Yes, absolutely. Or maybe we want to, you know, maybe, you know, at a certain time of year, we do want to head down to Florida because there is a significant volume of loads coming out of Florida or certain times of year. Maybe we want to stay focused more on the Midwest. So it's just it's very helpful to be able to see, you know, where the volume is. And how often are you using those tools to really understand the market? I would say just about every well, single day. Multiple times yeah. a day. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the thing that most people um, maybe don't understand, hopefully everybody on, on this, this webinar understand is the spot market is dynamic. It yeah. is constantly moving. Um, it, it, you never really know what you're going to wake up to. Um, you know, I think one of the core pieces, even if you are a truck driver out there and you're not moving a load today, right? So maybe you got a load that's going um, from New York all the way to the West Coast. That's going to take you a couple of days. But even in, during that time frame, you can definitely get on the DAT load board um, and take a look at just what the market is doing. Because by the when you picked up that load in New York, what happens in the West Coast by the time you get there could be a completely different market. And so being able to kind of watch that that data come in and see what's going on will really help you understand when you're going to go book that next load, um, because it might be a different world. Some, you know, a snowstorm might have hit the Pacific Northwest and all of a sudden rates are going through the roof. Right. So look right. at those types of things as well. Something that you mentioned that I really think is important the app is extremely helpful and the new app especially uh, to be honest the before the new dat1 app was out i used to tell drivers don't even bother with the app this new app is awesome that being said you even mentioned it there are a lot of other tools that are really much more optimized for the web version so if you're in a truck dispatching quickly using the app is great but when like she and i are always looking at this information and the actual load board, the load list of loads to me is probably the least valuable part of DAT. It's all the other information that you get. That's more important to me. And most of that is optimized really for the web browser, um, like the national truck count and load count, the market conditions index. You can use some of this stuff on the app, but it's, it is a much better uh experience to use it on a web platform in my opinion 
and I think if somebody is really in this market, there are a lot of desperate people. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Having all of the information is important. So when you stop for the evening, you know, if you're you're doing a quick 30 minute break, I understand doing your load searches on the app. But when you get a chance, I really think it's important that drivers open up that web browser and dig into the information to look at the markets over the past seven days, because you, you can look at information uh, through the market condition index and things. You can see past information trends and help you determine and predict where you should be going forward next week, what's happening. And that's super, super important. You really have to do your research. Remember, you don't want just the hammer and the app is the hammer, right? It's great. You can drive a lot of nails with a hammer, but having all of the information is so much more useful and you can be so much more productive to have as many tools available in your toolbox as possible all the time. So look at all of that information as often as possible. Yeah. And, and the thing to before the, we're going to move on to really the last tip, but the, the one thing to leave you with is, is data really is changing our industry. Right. And so there's so much more data. DAT has tons and tons of data that and there's a whole we, we provide a variety of different ways for you to access it. But use that data to your advantage. That's what's going to help you take you from from where you're at today to the next level is using data to really understand and, and, and really peel back some of those layers and go, oh, there's more opportunity for me to make money here. I can do something different here to really optimize your business. So what we want to do next is go ahead and move on to the last. And we really want to show, we talked a little bit about it and, and, and kind of alluded to this, but we want to show you the actual profit estimator. So we're going to show you a, a live example um, and, and show you it right in the application. Um, so this is a load that's that's posted on the DAT load board today. Um, as you can see, we just taught walk through this. I've entered in all of my different uh, costs, my fixed cost, um, and my, my targets that I want to make for my, for, for my money as well. And so when I come into the profit estimator, one of the things that we will do is, is we, now we're going to go through your variable cost, right? These are things that will change every single load, right? So again, not everybody's going to have each one of these variable costs. So if you do use factoring, you can put your factoring percentage in here, the operating cost is going to show you based on all those fixed costs and how much you want to bring home. Um, we are, we're giving you an idea of, of how much it's going to cost you to operate that truck for that specific lane. And again, we're, we're going to talk to you a little bit about when to take loads, when not to take loads in a second, but just going over the variable costs real quick. Um, then you're going to get to fuel costs, right? Now, Again, this is a, a, a kind of more general what we're doing here to just help everybody understand what this actually means for you. The fuel costs, we're taking your deadhead miles and the total trip miles, adding those all together, right? That's going to get you all of the miles that you need to, to go run that lane. Then what we're doing is we're taking the national average for fuel and we're, we're finding out how many gallons we think based off of how many miles per gallons you have entered into the app. You can change it right now. It's at 6.5. If you have a newer truck, if it's running higher, higher miles per gallon, eight, or maybe it's down to five, whatever your miles per gallon is, you put that in and it will change. So I can do that really quick for you. You put that in, let's say we're going to go to just six and save that. And that will then change how much my fuel cost is going to be for that. And then we're basically just take, taking the national average. Now, one thing to note is, is this may not be perfect for if you're running it all in California. That's going to be a little more expensive uh, versus if you're running somewhere in the southeast. But it gives you a general idea of what your fuel cost probably is going to be, right? Fuel is one of the number one variable costs that you can try to, to move around, right, and try to try to save some money here and there on. Um, so definitely something you want to keep in the back of your mind. Lastly, Let me we also have add, Go ahead. these numbers can be changed. So you put it in the one time and it will stay in the app. It'll remember all of this every time you use the app. But in the wintertime, you might get a mile per gallon less than you do in the summertime. And the fuel might change 
uh, and all your other expenses, they may change going forward. Uh, especially if you're a new driver and you just use estimates of what you think you'd get. And then once you run a month or two and you start to get real firm numbers, you can go back into this app and actually update and change it to more accurate numbers. If you're finding that it's, you know, the estimate it, you're running in only in California and your estimates are always a little low, you could tweak that number a little bit to make it a little more accurate for your operation. And it's easy to go in and change all this. Absolutely. It's this tool is we're not telling you exactly what to put in here. This tool is your tool. It, it's this estimator is really to help you. So the more accurate data you put in this tool, the more accurate profit and loss estimates that it's going to provide for you. Um, the other thing to know is um, that you can, let's say you're negotiating, you could always add this in here too. Let's say that for this lane, I want to put 2,500. Um, and so you can, you can play around with that to see um, if you want to put a specific price, you can kind of move it up or down to see exactly what the approximate profit might be. Um, the last variable cost is tolls. This is mostly going to be a big, big piece in the uh, Northeast, um, mm -hmm. some parts of the country. But this is something that a lot of carriers, I've, you know, especially newer carriers to the market, forget about, right? Because if you don't ask a broker for tolls up front, um, sometimes they, they just say, hey, that that was in the cost that that we talked about, right? That was in that two or three thousand dollars that we said. You have to make sure you factor that in into your actual cost. And I will um, say that toll calculator in this is is one of the most helpful features to know, especially if you're running in the Northeast where you have a ton of tolls, to be able to look quickly and see a pretty good estimate of what the tolls will be on that load. That right now, some of these lanes, you know, you go from Chicago to to southern New Jersey and you have to take the toll rate all the way across. You're talking hundreds of dollars on that one load and that, that could make a big difference. So that toll estimator is a huge part of it. Yeah. Um, and so th in this case, again, what it's what this one's telling us is say, hey, this load, uh, again, I changed the all in rate, but this load looks like it would be profitable, right? However, as, as Elizabeth just alluded to, um, you know, there are some different things that you can also look at for if you're coming out of Florida, if you're coming out of different spaces, that repositioning your truck is actually a really smart move, right? And so um, one of the things you can do is, is use the, all the other tools and all the other information that we provided for you today to then look at how you can to move to a different area. And so Kenny or Elizabeth, um, do you guys have an example of, of how you guys have done that in the last couple of months? Go ahead. You can do it. Yeah. Um, like I said, I always use Florida as an example. So, you know, we are always looking to move our trucks out of Florida to a better market and whatever rate we can get, sometimes just dead head out. It makes sense. Another extreme market is Denver, Colorado. Anytime we get a truck into Denver, we always look to see what is the nearest market that we can get them to where they can get another decent load, whether it's, you know, dead head them down to Albuquerque or Phoenix or back to Vegas or something like that. Sometimes that makes sense. Uh, but always looking at the markets to see where they should go, but also doing that ahead of time. So you know what your dead head on the other end will be, because really the way I see it is there's no such thing as an unpaid mile. Your truck is paid from the time you turn the key until the time you get back home, whether you're empty or loaded and you're either getting paid by the load you're going to pick up or the load you just went and dropped off you have to factor in that cost of the deadhead in deadhead out and so to look at the markets and determine that and sometimes it's so like i said you want to try to eliminate deadhead as much as possible but sometimes it makes sense to deadhead further for the higher paying load um you know florida is a quick example again i could book a load out of orlando to detroit michigan um or i could deadhead all the way to atlanta sometimes and book atlanta to detroit michigan for pretty much the same rate. So would I rather drive halfway there empty and save that extra fuel cost, book it for the same rate going there? That might make sense. But you have to know and look at those markets and opportunities before you book your load in a lot of times to make sure you're not making a bad decision. So could you help? So that there's a lot of decision making there that, that you're going to. How do you kind of look at the market and go, yes, that makes sense to run a deadhead or run at a loss or 
because I, I think what I'm hearing from you is, is that you're looking two or three steps ahead um, to try to really Always. think about where your trucks are going. Always. Yes. Um, and she has to do the same thing when she's uh, looking at a brokered load, because as a broker and all brokers have to factor this in, if there's a load going to South Florida, we know we have to pay enough to deadhead the truck back out. You know, it's it works on both sides of this. So you always have to look at where the market is. And you mentioned it before the truck uh, load to truck index. Um, and you can do this on the app as well. You could do searches for particular cities, always do a search into a city. Mm -hmm. And I, I always like to do that. And what I tell drivers to do is let's say you dispatch somebody and, and your next load delivers to Atlanta. What I always do is I pick all of the major cities in any direction. So Atlanta to Detroit, Atlanta to Chicago, Atlanta to Dallas, Atlanta back to Orlando or whatever. And I pick all of those. So I have a pretty good idea of every lane in every direction. And I do some load searches on all of those. So I get a good idea of the volume moving on that lane, the rates moving on that lane. So that way, when I post my truck and I start getting phone calls from brokers, I'm not blind and just guessing, shooting in the dark on what the rate should be. I know where I, I need to be and what the market will bear. And I do that on every load, every time for every truck. I always know in every direction what the rate should be before I start looking for a load into that city. So I need to know what the market will be when I get there and what I expect to deadhead out. I expect if I, you know, we are based out of uh, Florida, you know, we live down here. So I expect a lot of times to deadhead up to 500 miles to get my next decent load, right? Anything within 500 miles is pretty much a fuel money only load. So I plan for that and you plan for that going into that bad market and you always have to plan for it using the, you know, load to truck ratios, using the market conditions and having a good idea before you get there. Awesome. So let, let's kind of walk through that, that Orlando experience. And, and one of the things I want to want to drive us back to is that profit and loss sheet that we talked about earlier, right? Because kind of what, what we're wanting to make sure that everybody understands is, hey, if you lose $100 or maybe run a few miles less on your first lane, right, you're going to need to make that up on your next load, right? So at the end of the month, you're still in the green, right? So right. it's, it, you know, you might take a little bit less on one load. And so looking, you know, again, this is right now, I just ran a search from Orlando going anywhere, again, and, and I have this sorted in, in the app going essentially highest rate per mile. But as we kind of walk through this, you, you kind of see some of the loads are all kind of intra Florida, right? So from this experience, you would kind of go, eh, maybe that doesn't help get me to a better market, right? Right. It, that's one of the things you'd be looking at. And so like, maybe you'd go like, here's one that's going up to North Carolina. So for this example, you can tap in here. This is profitable. It's only three hundred dollars profit, right? So it's it's not the most profitable load ever. But um, you know, where kind of from here would you then go move and look at to run a search for Charlotte and kind of look at where what's coming out of Charlotte, right? Definitely. So I'll look to see what's coming out of Charlotte. I'll look to see the other thing I'll do is before I book a load um, going to Charlotte would I first look at what might be coming out of Southern Georgia going to Charlotte, right? Maybe it makes sense to deadhead. Like I said, I, I can, a lot of times, often, I can book a load from Orlando all the way up to Michigan, or I can book a load from Atlanta for the same rate to Michigan. So does it make sense to deadhead halfway there and get out uh, and then pick your load up? Because time is a huge factor on this as well. So if you spend a lot of time getting loaded in the bad market, and spend a day or two trying to work your way back to a good market. Whereas you could just cut your losses now, get to a good market as soon as possible and get back to making money as soon as possible. Does that make sense? So you really have to look at both sides of that coin, but definitely I will look at before I book that load, I'll start looking at Charlotte, what's coming out of Charlotte. Cause I know Charlotte right now is not a great market. Um, so do I want to go from a bad market, which Florida is to, a uh, mediocre, you know, maybe below average market of Charlotte, or do I want to go to maybe Dallas or Houston? Houston's a better market. I know that. So there might not be a, you know, a great paying load. I'm only making $300 for the one day going up to Charlotte for next day load. 
uh, maybe I make $300 going to Houston on a two day load, but now I make twice as much profit on the following load, which more than makes up for the losses on that. So look at your options on both of those. Yeah. So if we look at that, like going to Florida, going out towards the Houston area, right? So like Beaumont, one of these, like in this case, you know, you're, you potentially in in this, again, this is just a live example. You might lose a couple hundred going out Mm -hmm. to that market, but you can make that up because you're going to be in a really red hot market. Right. Right. Perfect. And, and really, again, if you took this load, and you said, all right, cool. I, you know, honestly, I took this load from, from Jacksonville out to Beaumont. Um, write that down in, in your in that profit and loss spreadsheet. So that way you know, all right, down a little bit, right? But now I'm in Beaumont. That might you, you might get a super profitable load out of there that might actually get you to a thousand dollars of profit or or, or right. something better that helps you um, kind of even that all out. Um, so at the end of the month, you're making the most most profitable. Definitely. Awesome. Well, we are getting right at time. Um, I know we've thrown a lot of data at everybody. Um, so Kenny and Elizabeth, where can can carriers reach you if they wanted to follow up with more information um, and learn about all the cool things you guys talk about? The easiest place to find us is on the Rates and Lanes Facebook group. Uh, we do. I'm always throwing information out there. I threw the quick uh profit estimator spreadsheet in there before we started the webcast today. Um, and that's free to download for anybody that's in Excel. Uh, I might try to make it in one of the other, you know, Google sheets or something as well, just so it's access to more people. Um, but that's the easiest place to find us and find more information. Um, and let me just reiterate that knowing your numbers is key. And we keep saying profit and loss, and that's more of an accounting term, right? Cause what we're doing here is trying to estimate is a load profitable. But having an actual profit and loss sheet, so which that means having actual bookkeeping done for your business. We're all running a business, an owner operator is running a business, run it like a business and keep track of your numbers, know what your cost is. Or if you're losing, a lot of drivers, unfortunately, are going to be going out of business this year. And know that before you're so far under the uh, underground with it that you can't dig yourself back out but you have to have your numbers and know what your numbers are. Margins are slim. Every, the ones that will survive are the ones that are able to control it and survive on the, on the thin margins, even if it just means treading water until things get better. Absolutely. And for anybody at DAT, the DAT customers, you can always reach out to us. Um, we can walk you through some of these different tools that we've built and help give you extra training on any of the different tools like trend lines, um, market condition index or, or, uh, national load truck counts. Um, so we can help you out with any of those. Just give us a call uh, or send it, reach out to us and we will be more than happy to help you walk through those. So with that, we're going to turn to a couple of, of really quick questions, um, that w- were, were posed, um, that we're going to kind of talk through just really quick, um, that we think are actually really important to this, this topic. Um, the first one is, and this is a, a question that I've gotten quite a bit, is does DAT share any of my cost and profit data with brokers? Um, so this is a really important piece for us, is that we built this tool um, specifically to help owner operators grow their business and understand this information. We saw a need in the market that said, hey, I don't know what my operating cost is and I don't know everything I need to do to calculate it. And so we wanted to provide a tool to help get you through that. This isn't about sharing any of your information with brokers. Anytime that DAT is going to share any information, we will tell you, hey, this is information that we we plan to share. Um, We do not share any of that. Now, we use some of the, the data internally just for us to understand how carriers are operating, but none of that is going out to the brokers. Some of it, what we've shown to you today is averages of what we've seen in the carriers in the marketplace. Um, so um, if you have any questions, please feel reach out to me. But that's just something that, you know, we built this tool specifically for owner operators. Um, we hit on it. Uh, where can I get the profit and loss sheet? Kenny, you just touched on it as well, is really encourage everybody to go out to, to Kenny's Facebook group. Um, it's Rates and Lanes, right? On Correct. Facebook. Yeah. 
yeah. go out there, connect, connect with that group. Um, and you can get the profit and loss sheet right there. Um, another was, is who can I reach out to for more questions? Um, you know, obviously that Kenny's group is, is definitely great for, you know, getting questions from, from a lot of people, but if you have questions for DAT, um, you can feel free again to reach out to anybody at DAT and we can help you out. If you want to reach out to me specifically, um, you can definitely find me on LinkedIn. Um, all of my contact information is out there as well. Um, my job at DAT is really to connect with carriers and understand how we can help make your businesses better through our products and services. And so if you ever have any feedback, you can always feel free to reach out to me and I will be more than happy to, to work with you on anything. Um, how reliable is the profit estimator? Kenny, I'll, I'll let you kind of, you've talked a little bit about this. Is the, you said it's helpful, but how reliable do, would you say this, this tool is? It's helpful and Math never lies. So as far as how accurate is it, it's 100% accurate, but the numbers are estimates, right? We're putting numbers in, we're using market data on that one particular load. It does not take into account the bigger picture, does not take into account deadhead, does not take into account market conditions. That is something else you have to do. You have to reach into your other tools, you know, into your tool bag and, and get the other tools out and use those. You know, this is just a hammer and you're looking at that one nail the one load and you're building a house you're looking at a bigger picture don't just focus on that one load and that one it, this is this is a a gauge right i tell people this i use this example a lot it's a gauge an indicator of is this good or bad it's not an 100 end all be all and uh, gauge is if you were to unplug your fuel gauge even though your needle on your gauge never moves that doesn't mean you won't ever run out of fuel, right? Doesn't mean it's going to be accurate. If the gauge is not always accurate, that doesn't mean the reality of that load is not accurate, right? So you have to remember that. Don't base your entire business on this one small piece of information. There's a ton of other information out there that you can use to really back it up. And I Absolutely. think another thing to remember, though, too, is, you know, let's say you choose to run three profitable loads for the week, but you know, you've only, your gross revenue is only $3,000, you might not end up being profitable, you know, for in, the, in the long run. So you really need to look at um, the big picture, like Kenny's saying, you know, what are my numbers for the week? What are my numbers for the month? You know, how am I doing for the quarter as far as your profitability? So put everything together. Yeah. And that's where that profit and loss sheet is going to come in clutch for a lot of drivers. Definitely. And, and, an actual profit and loss sheet, you know, so I highly recommend if anybody's using any other, you know, a TMS that tracks their loads and their miles uh, or uses like QuickBooks. QuickBooks is the most common accounting software out there. It's not tracking specific, but it is great to keep track of your bookkeeping. And you can quickly pull the numbers from that and plug those actual numbers, the actual expenses into the profit estimator. And that will be a lot more helpful. But knowing your cost, anybody that asks, if you, if somebody was to walk up to you right now and say, what is your cost per mile or your cost per day, you should know within pennies. And it shouldn't be a somewhere between one and five dollars a mile. And that unfortunately is what a lot of drivers have right now. That's the information that they're they're using. And then they struggle in this market because they don't know what it takes to be profitable. Yeah, definitely. That's why this tool is out, out here to help every single owner operator out there. Yeah. Um, the last thing, it, it, I think this was um, uh, kind of, you know, the, the markets go up and down. The question is really, how should I look at uh, one of the one of the pieces that we have in the tips <laughs> of the application um, is to split your expenses into 10 months. And so one of the things that, that we have, you know, we have a carrier principal analyst, Dean Croak, super brilliant guy. And one of the things that, that he's really been able to help a lot of owner operators with is, you know, the market is cyclical, right? It's going to go up, it's going to go down, right? And it's almost, almost predictable, except for the pandemic years. It's all, the market's almost predictable, right? We're going into March, it's becoming produce season rates are starting to come up, load volumes are starting to come up, right? I could have told you that in December, 
right? Now, it's plus or minus. It can go up or down, but I always know March is when produce season starts, and it's going to start to go up a little bit as we move into to the early summer, and then it's going to come back down and then go back up, right? So it's it's cyclical. There's going to be uh, some months that are not always, always hot. So what you want to do is, is take all of your expenses, right? So your truck payment. Take that truck payment, um, the all 12 months of truck payment, divide it by 10, right? And basically what you're trying to do is get all of the money you need to pay that truck payment for the entire year in 10 months instead of 12. So that way, when you get to that, those two slow months, maybe for whatever you're hauling, it's a little bit different for flatbeds, reefers, vans, um, different markets have different slow months. But when you get to those slow months, you already have the money that you need to make those payments, right? So it doesn't impact you quite as much. You can still keep profitable and keep moving along. And so that just helps you kind of understand how to spread that out a little bit um, in a different manner. And so that's a pro tip that- um, Yeah, uh, and go ahead. Most, most drivers take a week or two off around Christmas. Most drivers take a week or two during the summer months. That's four weeks right there, that's a month. Um, if you base your daily costs on a, a five day work week, right. And you go to dispatch your truck on a Monday morning, but that load doesn't pick up until Tuesday, that just turned into a three day week, three day weekend. If that happens five times a year, that's another week, right? You're going to have downtime in the shop. You're going to have your sick days or, or whatever. It'll quickly add up to, you know, the 10 months out of the 12. So a lot of drivers focus on, I need a certain number of miles and they, cut their expenses over 365 days. You're not always going to hit those miles. The biggest misconception, somebody will come in, I'm going to run 120,000 miles this year. But then they start dispatching and say, I want as much money as I can get with as low miles as I can get. Well, that throws all your numbers off because if you're not going to get that 120,000 miles for the year, your estimate for your cost per mile is way off. Right. Um, so that throws everything off. You're not going to work 365 days for the year. It's probably going to be more like 240 days out of the years, which are actually revenue generating days are. And that's if you're full time working. If you're a lazy driver, you like your time at home. It'll be less than that. Um, but if you do your math, if you're averaging 500 miles a day at 244 uh, days a year, you're at 120,000 miles. You're not going to hit either of those consistently. So always try to factor in your downtime, you will have it. It's not going to be a perfect year every year. Um, you can only use estimates when you're trying to book loads. This is a profit estimator. Everything is estimates going forward in the future, but you should always look at your actual to the penny numbers of your history so that you can track your expenses and make sure that you're staying within the parameters that you set for yourself. Awesome. Well, we're, we're at time for today. I hope everybody got a ton of value out of today. There's been so much information. Um, so please, you know, let us know if you guys like this feedback, love this feedback. Um, and I just want to say thank you again to Kenny and Elizabeth. Thanks for taking the time out of your guys' busy day uh, to share all this amazing knowledge with, with all the carriers out there. I wish we had a couple more hours because I could ramble on every one of these topics, you know, into, into detail, but I know we have to try to keep it brief. So if there's other questions, you know, the rates and lanes group is a good place to go and find it. Perfect. Thanks guys. Thanks. Thank you.